Go on, you know you like to watch. Well, debates anyway. So this is highly entertaining, I think. It's vegan, vegetarian versus meat-based diets, which is healthier? With myself and Dr. Michael Greger, vegan, on GB News. Enjoy. This section is a two-chart challenge. This is where I'm going to get two experts, and they're going to answer the big issues of our time, not from an emotional point of view, but purely from a factual point of view. And the question today is, what diet is actually healthier? Is it a vegetarian or a meat-based diet? And so I am delighted to say that I'm joined now by Iva Cummings, uh, a metabolic researcher and co-author of Eat Rich Live Long, and Dr. Michael Greger, physician and founder of the non-profit nutritionfacts.org. Gentlemen, good to see you and thank you for joining me on the Two Chart Challenge. We believe in free speech and good, healthy, rigorous debates here on GB News. Iva, I'm going to start with you. Tell me, why is a meat-based diet healthier for the human body? Right. Thanks a lot, Bev. Well, I'll just say something first. My views reflect the views of my enormous network of professors, doctors in metabolic and nutrition science. So it's not just me. So the reality is that a meat-based diet is nutrient dense and the proteins in meats and animal foods are way more bioavailable right to humans a part of it is our evolution came from eating meat so to get a decent protein and 40 percent of americans in a recent study are not reaching the target that target's been raised so it's worse than that and the bioavailability of proteins is around a half to a third often of animal foods so we have a huge problem developing world a massive problem almost none of them are getting their required protein and vitamins and animal foods are the solution even acknowledged by the WHO though not pushed very hard it's acknowledged that meat fish and eggs and nutrient dense foods are required for the anemia and the protein deficiencies across the whole planet so a vegetarian diet is doable and I have many vegetarian friends and Joel Kahn, a vegan cardiologist who's quite famous. <laughs> Good pal. However, he acknowledges you need to get your supplements and you need to be very careful with a diet that's missing animal foods. And okay. he acknowledges that. Thank you, Ivor. Dr. Michael Greger. Ivor Cummings has friends who are vegetarians. He even has some friends <laughs> who are vegan, but they're not as healthy as him, are they? Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, look, the number one killer of British men and women is heart disease. There's only one diet ever proven to reverse the progression of heart disease. That's a plant-based vegetarian diet. If that's all a plant-based diet could do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? And the fact that can also be so effective preventing, arresting, or reversing other leading killers like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. People aren't dying of deficiency diseases. When's the last time you heard of someone uh, having protein deficiency, berry, berry, pellagra, scurvy? No, people are dying of excess, of diseases of excess, of excess saturated fat and cholesterol. The healthiest diet is one centered around whole plant foods. Iva, you might look good, but inside your heart is not doing so well as a burgerholic. Well, uh, burgers are okay if there's no wheat kind of put into them, if they're just real meat. But uh, I think Dr. Greger there is referring to the Ornish study. And I have many good cardiologist friends, including Dr. Arthur Agatston, who invented the Agatston score. And uh, basically, those studies are dismissed. They're based on grainy kind of images. They're not really solid science at all. So it's been demonstrated by Professor Jeff Follock and many others in human studies that a low carb, high fat, uh, animal based, largely diet can dramatically lower blood fats in diabetic people. And I just show something on the screen, if I could be at liberty to do so. And you'll see the blue line collapsing and the pink line rising up to the right over 40 years. Yeah. And essentially that's the reduction in red meat consumption over the last uh, 40 years and the explosion of type 2 diabetes insulin resistance, which drives most heart disease. So to be honest, this isn't rocket science. We've lowered our nutrient density meats and we've exploded our chronic disease, including, as per Dr. Greger, the cardiac disease, the biggest killer. It's insulin resistance 
resistance driven and a whole foods animal based diet with plant foods can help counter this catastrophe. Go on then, uh, Michael. That's a very convincing chart that Ivor Cummings brought to the occasion. Do you have a chart that can beat that? <laughs> Um, uh, my chart was um, all the diseases that are lower rates in vegetarians. <laughs> and so beyond the heart disease is lower rates of cancer and dementia. And in fact, I ran out of, out of uh, space. There's also lower gout, on and on. Dr. Dean Ornish, the heart disease reversal study was published in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, The Lancet, out of Great Britain. I feel like I'm talking to a flat earther here, but it's even worse than that. I mean, if you want to go around talking about like lizard people or something, you can just get dismissed as a crank. But what you're spewing could actually hurt people, could kill people. But Michael, your chart was rubbish. It wasn't even a chart. It was just a load of words written down on a piece of paper in a green felt tip pen. I was going on the science, isn't he? <laughs> Lots of things have changed over the last few decades. That's what's called ecological evidence. It's the lowest rung of evidence. The fact that you know, overall population uh, consumption has gone up or down versus disease rates. What we want are interventional studies, randomized controlled studies where you can actually prove you can reverse the leading killers of Britons with a healthy diet. And that is a diet centered around plant foods, reducing one's intake of meat, eggs, dairy, and junk. Ivor Cummings, last word to you. Okay, the Ornish diet is decades old study based on a handful of people and it's been ripped apart left, right, and center. I won't even give it dignity, but I'll just show one more thing. Uh, University of Washington, a full review, and basically red meat is not a health risk. So it was anti-science and junk science that said it was. The reality is now full review, and we've known this for 10 years. Red meat is nutrient-dense, healthy. Eggs are a superfood. You should have a balanced omnivore diet with high nutrient density, and the science now is clear as day. The red meat kind of scam, saying it's unhealthy, was absurd. We evolved via access to nutrient-dense meats. No paleoanthropologist worth their salt would question that. It's a reality. Gentlemen, thank you so much for kicking off the two chart challenge. I will let our viewers get in touch with me and decide who they thought was right, all in a good spirit of debate. Thank you both so much. Ivor Cummings there and Dr. Michael Greger. Let me know what you think. Do you think a vegetarian diet is always healthier uh, than a meat-based